All right, my friends, you've been waiting for this review for God. How many months now? It's been a while. It's been a it's while. It's been a while. We got the RBH Sound SVTRS Limited super Edition. Towers. Limited Edition Limited. Super Towers. Seven and a half foot speakers. We are going to be reviewing them right now. Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala, and we are with Don Dunn. AT Get her 2020 done. and, and Audioholics. We're joining forces to do this review, but you know what? Before we start, Don, holy shit, I'm wearing a red shirt. Do you know what that means? You're screwed. Do you know what that means? You're gonna die. No, I was actually thinking, we're gonna make audio great again. <laughs> and we're gonna make audio great with RBH uh, Sound with these speakers, and that's what we're gonna be it, talking it, about. It, it really, truly is the next step. Truly. like. We're speechless. We just had to take a moment of silence because... Oh, righty then. No, <laughs> seriously, this speaker system represents, and I've heard countless amazing super systems, flagship systems from some of the greatest manufacturers in the world, Meridian, uh, and then and, and it goes on. Wilson, and yeah. it goes on. I've never heard a speaker system that had this absolute unlimited... Wait, wait, can I do it? Yep. Unlimited power! Uh, it literally zero dynamic compression as loud as you play it as low as you play it the speaker system just keeps going and the technology behind it with the time alignment and the drivers and the individual amplification it truly is a powered system it's beyond anything that i've ever heard and i've heard california auto technologies i mean yeah. i've heard I've been, jbl we've been synthesis same, yeah, we've been i have heard demos. the baddest systems and i've installed the baddest systems and this thing is a step above anything I've ever heard. It is literally the next advancement in audio. And, and I hope that people get a chance to demonstrate this and listen to it. Yeah. And we're not going to give you a demo through YouTube for well, obvious reasons. That's for, retarded. For obvious reasons. You're yeah. not going to hear them on your Beats yeah. headphones. Yeah. But <laughs> let me geek out for a second. People do that, though. Right? Oh, they do. Oh, it's, they it's, do. It's they make a career, they make they, a career they, out of it. The British guys do that. Yeah. All yeah. <laughs> it's all BS, just saying. So without digressing, let me geek out, give you some specs. We actually have a playlist. I've done a couple of videos. We had RBH Sound here. We had Shane Rich here. We did some tech stuff on this speaker. But let me recap for those that haven't seen the speaker, that haven't seen those videos. This is a monolithic modular seven and a half foot tower. Monolithic. I love that word. Monolithic. I, I just had to throw that in. Monolithic. So, so if you think about it, it's really three speakers in one. It starts sure. out with the base model, the SV-831. Uh, that has three eight-inch aluminum cone woofers. That's mid-range. Mid-range woofers, yeah, yeah. That's the proprietary uh, design from RBH. And the really special sauce on that, that tweeter. That tweeter. It's the it's RS, unlimited. The RS Cantum. It's one inch by five inch. It's it has the it's sheer <laughs> output of the best horn speaker out there without piercing. It, the it's ears. like a five and a quarter inch or six and a half inch driver. Yeah. It's retarded. Yeah. That tweeter literally has more range. I mean, so many people now. I know a lot of people are drifting towards the horn-loaded tweeters, horn-loaded speakers, because they give high output, but they're harsh and you have limited sound. You really do. This tweeter gives you that same exponential output, but with real true sound quality. Yeah. It really is. It, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, 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 it's one of the best AMT tweeters on the market. It's not Our, the best. Yeah. I think it might be. I haven't, I haven't heard a better one. And it's been used for several years now by RBH. So that's just the midsection. What really makes the gut wrenching bass, which is forty percent of the experience, Don. More than that. At I mean, least forty percent. We're, 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 we're base a so let's say holics. it's seventy percent for right, us. Right. Imagine having four long throw twelve inch subwoofer drivers. Which two twelves equal or outdo the surface area of an eighteen. Yep. And I know eighteens are very popular and I've always liked eighteens, but they're just not articulate. They can't they don't have the the, the speed that you have in a twelve. It's just not possible. And two of these 12s in these base modules have the output of an 18 inch, but with the with the speed and the sound quality of a 12, it's, I mean, it truly is an amazing experience. And just one of the base modules exceeds our extreme baseaholic rating. The port, it has a six inch port and it has like 12 liters of volume per port. So you've got four subwoofers. You got almost 50 liters, 48 liters of, of port volume <laughs> in this system. <laughs> no, it's a lot of liters. 
but no, it, this this system is magical. I, I I had some time. Of course, I've listened to it here at the Audioholics, the old school demo room. Yeah. Not yep. to mention with the new one, and then recently in Tennessee, we did an event with um, RBH speakers. This full disclosure, my company um, HD Twenty Twenty. We've recently become an a, an RBH dealer based on me listening to them, and I've integrated them into some of the most world-class systems you can imagine. Um, in, in fact, we're doing a theater in the third largest house ever built in the United States of America. That's impressive. I actually and, and got to a, see that. Yeah, it's yeah. a huge theater, and the RBH is knowing when they have the output, but also the sound quality. It's not that hard to get the output, but to get non-ear shrill sound like you get from horns, I'm sorry. You got to EQ the hell out of horns to get any kind of decent sound. I don't care. Not all horns are created equal. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But at the end of the day, this this thing is this absolute has prestigious output. Um, then I spent some time in Nashville recently. It was a Nashville music festival, and our BH did an event with a local dealer up there, and we got to sit down, and we had producers, and we had people come in, engineers, and listen to these from all the way from their studio monitors up to the super tower system. Their jaws dropped. I mean, literally, and I got to spend an amazing amount of time, including the new 6500 series towers, which yeah. we're going to be reviewing very soon, which I think will probably be speaker of the year. I mean, it's an amazing speaker. RBH is is a, an incredible value. I know at $45,000 for the speakers with the amplification, it's out of most people's range and doesn't sound like a value. But when you compare these to the 80, 90, 100, 200, $300,000 flagship speakers of other companies, like Vaughn, <clears throat> um, absolutely will floor you. It, it is a it is beyond a value. Well, the other cool thing about it, for 45 grand a pair, and I know that's a lot of money uh, for anything, to be honest with you, they come with all the amplification, so you've got a six-channel amplifier. The Pascal. The Pascal Class D module, which is some of the best on the market, especially because of their power supply. So the base modules are getting 1,500 watts per side. The mid modules are getting 500 watts, and then the tweeters that get on the on their own are getting 250 watts from that amp. Plus, you got the Murani DSP, which does the FIR filter optimization. You can watch our video. You could have a Metallica concert. Yeah. And the Murani's probably running it. Remember? When yeah, we that's did a that pro. Base, it's a pro DAC. Remember when we did that bass DSP. demo and it went boom, 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 and we just stopped hearing it, and all of a sudden the floor started going. Brrr. Yeah. I mean, amazing. People think 12s can't go that low. They love 18s. Well, let me tell you something. Starting with Ken Kreisel and M&K and going forward, a 12-inch subwoofers in an array is the way to go. It's, that's you my got A12, opinion. so you got tons of surface area, plus the DSP. And the cool thing about it is when, for the $45,000 for the speaker, you get the speakers, <laughs> you get the amplifier, you get the Murani you DSP. You get the designer. You get the designer that comes to your you house. Get calibration. You don't get Don, though, because he talks too much. Yeah, I eat a lot, too. But you could get me for another five grand. Let me just say, oh, I'd show up and you, we could have a good time. You're cheap, man. You're cheap. Whatever. I would have charged <laughs> 10. But yeah, anyways, right. so you get the designer that comes to your house. He does the whole optimization using the FIR filters. And you even get, you know, if they get if they get dirty, you get the guys that come. They'll wipe it down with the cloths. Because Lupus. these are semi-gloss uh, speakers, so they do reflect. Beautiful. They're very pretty. The contoured cabinet is, uh, I just think it looks actually really stunning. Hey, listen, you walk into a room with these monoliths in it. I mean, it's like it's like a 2001 A Space Odyssey. Remember? Yep. Brr, brr. I mean, it was a. They are. We, we were listening in Nashville. We were listening to all kinds of different music and just the, the sheer power. Like Phil Collins uh, with I Can Feel It. Yeah. Um, yep. that, that song when it. Do -do 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 -do, it just overwhelmed you you felt like it's mike tyson was in a room ready to give you a punch a right visceral, well it's a visceral experience it is it's like a ride at disney world i mean that's the only thing i can equate it to yeah and that but clear concise overwhelming sound and bass punch that goes to your chest low frequencies that move your soul and this system and and, and I, i'm telling you i have i'm a huge audiophile I've been in the business almost 30 years i have listened to literally everything and i never ever heard a system like this and you, you can, can i mean you're the godfather oh thanks it's not just the it's not just the dynamics and the bass which are uh, unmatched it's the finesse of the speaker so i sat here one night articulation and I, just, I put on um a, pat, a couple of pat metheny records on title you know titles uh, title streaming yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. pat metheny and i just was blown away by the detail and the and just the intimacy that the speaker a speaker this large actually disappears in your room it's crazy isn't it and the way it images i mean because of the fir filter it reminded me when i went to um 
when I went to Kansas City and I got to listen to the uh, Martin Logan Neoliths, those are like eighty five thousand dollars. Amazing, but I mean they're amazing. Yeah, those are amazing. amazing. Those are the best ESL speakers on the market. The thing I like about an ESL speaker is the way it just pinpoints the imaging into your head. In in, a, in your listening zone. Yeah, in your listening zone. Right. This speaker does that. It does because of the FIR filter, because of the time alignment. It's very few speakers that give you full time alignment for the entire bandwidth. That's what the FIR filter is doing. So you got that, plus you got the dynamic range of dynamic drivers. It's really unmatched. It can't be matched by an ESL. It no. just can't. Yeah. I mean, I love the ESLs. I spent time with Mark Logan. I went to their factory. I love Mark Logan speakers, but I'm telling you, this thing is next level. I've never heard anything like it, Gene. I yeah. really haven't. And the cool thing about it is, I, I know you're looking at the speaker, it's giant, right? Yeah. So RBH makes an in-wall version, and Don installed like two systems already. Well, I haven't right? installed it yet. So so this system is modular. It's a it's a subwoofer module, a mid-range and tweeter module, and another subwoofer module. I have a couple systems that I've sold and design, designed and sold where we're going to kind of break that up. We're going to do the mid-range subwoofer module, the uh, in-wall speaker kind of, in a, in a horizontal installation and the subwoofers in the front with a fill subwoofer in the back we in one family room it's going to be amazing so there's flexibility here yeah. you just don't have to have these giant um 2001 pro bag demand yeah. monoliths yeah. you could actually break this up they make an in-wall version with two twelves, the si 12 12 it's brand it's new this this yeah yeah and there's also a new rbh developed um a new subwoofer uh, that i helped them with that they lovingly call the double d for Donnie Dunn. But anyways, it's a it's a great in-wall subwoofer. So RBH is one of the few companies that has their own cabinet shop, their own paint booth. They can literally make, if you're an integrator or if you're a client and you need something that's just specific to your needs, they can make it. And that's powerful. A lot of companies claim that they do. Very few do. Yeah. And and, and Shane Rich, I mean, by, I, I, he's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of his for many, many years. The guy's a genius. He's just an absolute genius and, and, and can make anything to suit your particular environment needs. And if you don't want to see all the drivers, if, you, if it's too reflective, um, they have the magnetic grills, which are really nice. Or now, or now the, you can you can actually get some of their drivers. You can anodize, anodize black. black. Yeah, on some of their new speakers. I don't know about these. Yeah. But like the 6500s and so forth. Actually, RBH is working on a lot of new products that are amazing. I'm telling you, the 6500s at 50 inches tall blew my mind. It literally, Shane and I spent two and a half, three hours just listening. Mm -hmm. And that's the pure joy of what we do is just listening, sitting down and playing, hey Shane, check this out. He's like, hey Don, check this out. I yeah. love that. And that's that's why we do this, man, it's not. No, it, it, this system is, is ultimately now my reference system, as you guys Period. know. And I came from having the Status Acoustic ATs, which were my favorite speaker of life. That were about a little bit more expensive. Yeah, you thought than you these. were going to put those in your in your burial. I tomb, thought right? that was going to be in my mausoleum for sure, but now <laughs> I'm moving in with these because I like the fact that you could tune the speaker to the room. So right now this speaker is optimized for this room, but as you guys know, we're moving in about a month to the Audioholic Smart House. We're going to have a completely different home theater in there. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have Shane come out again. We're going to do FIR filter because we got to design that one from the ground up. Right. This right. this is on the second floor. And there's all kinds of problems to overcome shape of the room. Literally, we have the perfect room in the new Audioholic Smart yep. demo house. So it's only going to um, get better. It's, I mean, beyond better. We're going to have two additional uh, signature uh, RBH subs in the back yep. to supplement this. And we're and with the Storm Audio, we're going to be able to explore all the audio formats and literally the cutting edge of what's available. Yeah, uh, 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 in audio technology and equalization. So we're going to send digital signals out from the 24-channel storm audio processor directly into the Mirani. So there's no A to D, D to A conversion. It's going to be pure. Yeah, as it's pure it's as it can absolute be. pure. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to mention is they're only making 20 pairs of these. We have pair one, which I'm very honored. Thank you, RBH, for and making I've sold these pair. pair two. You, you have. And pair and three. So because they only make 20 pairs, you get a little commemorative plaque with the signed signature of the uh, original owner, Roger Or Hass. a tattoo. Or a tattoo. Whatever you want, they'll pay for either. So yeah, you know, we got the plaque, we put it on. It just, it's it's a cool looking speaker. It is ginormic. If I could say anything negative about the speaker, it's just a pain in the ass to set up because you got three giant boxes well, yeah, that weigh 120 just, pounds just, each. Yeah, it's huge. You got the sophistication of adding DSP. It just, comp it, it adds its complexity but to the system. But when you buy the system, RBH flies in the guy who designed it. Yeah, and, and another 
guy to set it up. Who does that? Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, it's, it's hard. I'm trying to find negatives. The only negatives I could say is that they're just giant. You need to have a room. This room barely fits them because the ceilings here are eight feet. I have about five or six inches of clearance. My new house is going to have 10 feet of ceiling, so I'll have a little bit more yeah, space. Yeah, these are not designed for double wide trailers, sorry, Gene. Yeah, <laughs> trailer park boys. But yeah, so they're large speakers. They are definitely large speakers, as you can see in this video. But with that largeness comes incredible dynamics, incredible there's sound There's no replacement stage for, for displacement. displacement. Yep. There's not, I mean, yep. there's not, sorry, Bose. But listen, you can have little teeny drivers and all that. You just can't move air. You can't move the air like you can with these. Yeah. I'm sorry. It is what it is. No, they're really impressive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up a, um, I'm going to do a written review. I'm going to show you the measurements because we measured the speaker and it's an asymmetric dri driver configuration because the tweeter's on one side, the mids are on the other. But I was surprised at how good the off axis is on the outer side of the speakers. Even though that the mid ranges kind of control the vertical dispersion, you are oh. still getting really good, very uniform dispersion. And you can see the measurements, I'll pop them up here, but I'm gonna go more into detail when I do the written review of these speakers so you guys can really understand how these things objectively perform. So Gene, what I was really amazed with is how light these speakers are, how the transients are on the speaker, how articulate it is, how free floating it is. I'm looking, what was some of that demo? You, terms. you have an HD 2020 playlist, and some of those those uh, songs are great. Songs, yeah, it, like it, it runs the gambit stuff. from from Mediterranean music to to acoustical music. Listen, Tidal. If you don't have Tidal or Cobuzz, you got to get it. Can I mean, other people that have Tidal get the HD 2020 playlist? No, you'd have to share it. But uh, oh, okay, there, there's tons of great songs. We're gonna actually do an HD 2020 slash Audioholics playlist that we're gonna put on our maybe the Patreon or whatever, yeah, yeah. so that our, our fans, our, our followers, I mean, uh, brothers and sisters, I don't want to call them fans, can actually co-listen to what we've spent hours and hours trying to find. But these speakers are light. You would think this these seven and a half foot towers would be, all the, I mean, yeah. like they're like, sometimes I, I feel like I'm listening to a little set of six and a half inch bookshelves. They're amazing. And speaking of which, if you can't do a seven and a half foot tower, they have another active speaker called the PM8, and we have a written review coming on those. PM8, sir. It's basically the eight inch driver. Studio monitor. And, yeah, the studio or, or monitor. It's either a near field monitor yeah. or it's a, 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 a powered set of bookshelves. And they have a PM6 coming with the six and a half inch driver yeah. soon. And the 6500 towers, which are going to be in the six to $8,000 price range. And I know it sounds like a lot of money. From what I heard, they would crush $15,000 tower speaker. I mean, I, so it's and, the, and a powered version of them. It's like the this. advantage of having active speaker yeah. design. So there's so. no crossovers in these speakers. The amplifiers directly couple to the drivers yeah. with no loss from inductors or capacitors right. or resistors. It's not or RBH that. speakers, it's RBH sound. And when they say sound, they're working really hard on holistically from the amplification to the cross, you know, or lack of crossovers. They're trying to bring DSP, everything into yeah. the digital realm because... Listen, that's the future. Hooking a receiver up to a pair of speakers with a crossover built in is this eventually going to go away. You're going to have things that hook in, and it's all done in a digital domain. I know that 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 I've done speakers like that in the past with Meridian and Lynn. Lynn had that, and it was very ultra high end stuff. A little shaky on the reliability, but certainly certainly something that we've done in the past. RBH is really pushing that forward, and I think other people are going to pick up on it. Yeah. I know the Dart system is one that comes to mind yep. that does that. Yeah. Listen, have an amplification specifically made for your speakers without crossovers, where everything crossover is done in the digital realm and added to the equalization is the future because it sounds so much better than what yeah. you've ever heard. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Oh, I, I, I honestly say I, mean, I, seriously. I didn't expect to actually wind up keeping these speakers and, and sending back my old ETs. Yeah, because you love those. I did. They look like the ships from the fifth element yeah. and yeah. we're nerds. Yeah. But no, it, it, no. It, I, when I heard them, I literally had a tear in my eye. And these things are a wall of sound. I mean, literally free of dynamic compression and, and articulate and sweet. And as that sound increases, that volume level, the sound doesn't change. No. It's just that it's very sound. linear. It's very yeah, linear. Like, like yeah, like Revel speakers is one. Kevin Vokes, love you, brother. Kevin Vokes is always designed with Snell and, and, and Revel. That free of dynamic compression, these speakers take that to the next level. Yeah. They There's really just more, dis more displacement, basically. Bigger driver. No area. replacement yeah. for displacement. Yeah. So, guys, if you like this video, please thumb please. it up. Please make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell notification. That way you get notices when these videos drop. Don't forget about our Patreon, patreon.com slash audioholics. We'll put a lot of unique content That's there That's how I you. get my new Porsche, right? Yeah, right. More like the, uh, the Adobe <laughs> Porsche, car. The Adobe car. car. The Adobe the car made out of flag. <laughs> Seriously. 
Dude, he's he's jacked up on Adderall right now, so you have to forgive him. But <laughs> he's jacked up on. Well, we won't digress too much. But guys, I hope you like this video. Check these speakers out. We'll put some links down below. Look at the playlist. You can look at my interviews with, with Shane Rich from RBH Sound so you can learn Amazing. more about these speakers. Try to set up a demo if you can. And until next time, my friends, keep, keep listening. listening. All right, my friends, we spent a good amount of time talking about the RBH Sound SVTRS active speaker system. But you're probably wondering, what happens if I'm doing beyond two channel setup here? Because honestly, most people that are doing a massive speaker like this are probably going to do a two channel setup. But we're at Audioholics. We like two channel and multi channel. So what about the center channel? Well, I wanted to tell you about the center channel that, I, that RBH lent me uh, when I was doing the review of this. It's the SV821. And it's basically an identical version of this speaker with one mid-range missing. So it's an MTM, it's got two eight inch woofers, it's got the same Aorus Cantum um, AMT tweeter, which is like almost five inches by one inch. The very large, very high dynamic tweeter. And people were looking at this when I put up the pictures on YouTube and I put them up on Facebook, they're like, that center channel's too small for those speakers. It really isn't. The only thing you're missing is one mid-range because we're not doing bass in the center channel. That's what the subwoofers are for on the, on the main speakers. So technically, there's a lot more cone area, a lot more surface area for your mid-frequencies in a center channel like this with two 8-inch drivers than the typical MTM that you get with two 6.5s and, and a tweeter or the WTMWs that have two 6.5s, a 5.25s and, and a tweeter. This thing has way more surface area to do the mid-range frequencies. And in fact, the sensitivity of the speaker is like 90 dB. And that's pretty high for a non-horn type of speaker. This is a real 90 dB. RBH is very conservative with the way they do their measurements. So the center channel that I have here is actually the passive version. It doesn't have the crossovers built in. But I'm using the RBH 8 Alpha amplifier to power it. And we're using the Murani DSP to do all the processing in it. They do offer a version of the center channel with the crossovers built in if you're not doing the active series of speakers uh, from their limited edition series. So there are two versions of the center channel. The one I have here, no crossovers, so it's a direct connection to the amplifiers, so it's the most purest signal that you can get to it. And when we tuned the center channel, initially when they fired it up, I was like, ah, eh, it wasn't that blown away by it because I was coming from the Status Acoustics 8C center channel, which had four six and a half inch mids and that beloved beryllium tweeter that I love so much from my AT towers. So initially, I was like, I kind of prefer my 8C center channel, which was a one of a kind, by the way. RBH only made one. So Shane, uh, the RBH director, technical director, is like, well, let me tune this speaker a little bit more for you. He measured my 8C center channel, and then he basically transferred the kind of properties from that speaker to this through the DSP processor to kind of get me where I was with the 8C. And let me tell you, he made some magic happen with the DSP because this center channel blew me away. I really did not expect the kind of dynamics that we got out of it, the clarity, the focus, and the more I listened to the center channel, the more I really enjoyed it. And it really complemented this giant monolithic seven and a half foot tower speaker system. I never felt like I was dynamically range, range limited. And the off axis response was good across all of my seats. I didn't get any problems with lobing or anything like that. And that FIR filter implementation really adds that immediacy to the sound like I was hearing from the towers. So this is one magical little center channel and it's not as little as you think. It actually is pretty, it's a pretty large cabinet. It's just that when it's sitting next to these seven and a half foot towers, it looks small. But I tell you, I really enjoy um, this speaker. I really am now a big believer of the AMT tweeter. It took me a while to come on board to this kind of technology, but now I see the path ahead. And it looks like RBH is gonna be doing a lot more products with this kind of tweeter. And for good reason, because the detail that you get out of these tweeters is amazing. They're very airy and the dynamics that come out of them.
So my wife and I, we spent a lot of time up here watching TV programs. I watched, I watched about four seasons of Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Silly show, but let me tell you, the, the vocal clarity coming out of the center channel was just excellent. And then for music, I put on a lot of multi-channel music. We put on Dark Side of the Moon multi-channel. Um, we put on, um, I did a lot of Genesis listening. I did Trick of the Tail and SACD. And that mix has Phil Collins' voice anchored right at the center. And if you have a crappy center channel, it, it could sound, you know, boxy or it could just sound unnatural. And let me tell you, it sounded incredible. I mean, I really heard the clarity of uh, Phil Collins' voice when he was at his peak prime singing and drumming. Um, we just really enjoyed this whole experience. So let me tell you what I'm gonna do with the AudiHawk Smart Home. I am not gonna be using this center channel in the Smart Home only because I'm using an acoustically transparent screen and I have the luxury now of doing their in-wall center channel equivalent to the um, SVTRS speaker system. I'll have the same three eight inch mid ranges and the same, same AMT tweeter vertically aligned right behind the screen. That's the ideal. But if you don't have that capability, this is the next best thing. It's low profile enough so it fits right under a screen and you could angle it up on the stand like I did here with these plateau stands. I kind of angled the center channel up so it fires at the listening area. And for what it is, for around $2,000, this is one hell of a center channel. I have to tell you, right now, out of all the center channels I've had up here, even my, including my status 8C center channel, which was far more expensive and larger than this, I'm actually thinking that this is probably the best sounding center channel I've had in this room. And that speaks volumes because I'm very critical about center channel performance. So guys, if you're considering the RBH SVTRS speaker system, don't discount this little guy over here because he packs quite a punch. It's almost like the USS Defiant from Star Trek for you Deep Space Nine fans. She's got teeth. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please share it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Don't forget about our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.